Hello, this is James from xrobots.co.uk. Today I'm going to show you an actual robot, which is pretty rare for me, even though um, basically I start in my website to show robot projects. Most of the projects haven't in fact recently been robots, but now I have an actual robot. Um, the link to the pictures for the build on this robot are in the description of the video. Um, there's several videos, there's a previous testing video and two blog videos about making the upper body. There's also pictures, there's also code for programming it and um, a rundown of the electronics. So I did a previous testing video as I say. I've now built the upper body so I'm just going to go over a bit of a recap of the robot and then we'll put it on the floor and see it walking. This is a bipedal android and um, it walks on two legs. The height so far is 26 inches or uh, 66 centimetres with its head on it would be near 80 centimetres or 31 and a half inches so it's roughly half the height of a human sized uh, sorry a human adult so that was the intention was basically to build something almost human sized I guess you could say it's child size although well, I'm not sure if children when they're that small can walk but anyway so um, the mechanism is quite simple. I've actually got a model here so I can demonstrate how the legs work. So basically, instead of having a separate actuator for the ankle, knee and hip, there's actually basically uh, two per leg. So the above and below the leg is in fact a parallelogram, which means that basically the body always stays exactly upright no matter what the legs are doing which makes it much easier to control. So I have uh, basically a servo above and below the knee or at least for the upper and lower part of the leg on each leg and another servo which um, operates for the side to side motion which this model doesn't actually do. So here is the servo which operates the ankle motion. The ankles are hinged on these um, bolts here and we have a servo which operates a little rod to a bolt with a hole drilled in so that the uh, they can tip this way essentially. We also have a very similar arrangement to that in the hips So we can see we've got a servo there with a rod that goes through a hole and again that's hinged here and here so we have a pair of servos for the hips. The upper body hinges at this point back and forth and that was the uh, most recent addition to the Android and if you look at my previous videos on this you can see me actually making this drilling holes in metal and so on and it has another servo which is in here. Now basically for all of these joints I've used chocolate block as a kind of coupler so the hole that you get in the middle of chocolate block where you would normally screw it down is actually acting as a pivot against, um, it's actually a modesty block that you use to put together self-assembly furniture and there's a servo in the back there which you can possibly just see which is actually able to move this thing backwards and forwards. And I've used the same arrangement for each leg. So again, I have a rod coming from the servo to a piece of chocolate block, which is the uh, same on both legs and above and below the knee. And that basically will skew the parallelogram one way or the other. And that's essentially how it works. The electronics for this are actually quite simple. I have a single pickaxe 18x on a pickaxe official development board and that is all that is controlling it. Um, basically that will send servo positions that all the servos are on for fixed positions and fixed timers. I have two servo controllers which are the two Palulu Mini Maestros and if I, as I said if you look on my website there is code for programming there's basically pickaxe code for programming those so that you can control all the servos so as I said they're on fixed timers and fixed positions 
but um, the, the uh, robot is actually dynamically stable. So I have these additional units which are off the shelf. Um, they're basically RC radio controlled heading gyros from helicopters which would normally be used to stop the helicopter rotating so they would control the tail rotor. As you can see I actually have four of these and those four gyros are in line with the hip and the ankle servos so basically they take care of the dynamic stability but without having to do loads of heavy lifting in terms of processing overhead so obviously a pickaxe isn't really quick enough to do the dynamic stability but I don't have to worry about that because these um, gyros modify the position of the servos based on the movement of the Android um, each one has two wires basically they go in line with a servo but they also have another channel which is to set a sensitivity so you can dynamically set the sensitivity of the gyros whilst, it, whilst the Android's moving if you wish to do so although generally I set them to a fixed sensitivity for each thing that I want it to do and it is actually really surprising what difference even 5% um, more sensitivity will make to how the um, Android reacts in terms of power, I have a lithium-ion battery, which is um, a 12-volt battery pack I got off eBay. It comes with its own mains charger. It's one of these. And I also have at the back a separate PP3 9-volt battery, which powers the electronics with its own switch. And this is a 12-volt 12 12-volt uh, input, 5-volt output at 10 amps. Uh, voltage regulator which is there to power all the servos so the lithium ion pack on the front goes in here and comes out here and um, then those go to the two servo controllers so basically those servos can have pretty much as much current as they want and um, since upgrading that from four AA batteries you can actually tell that it's got much more power and much more accuracy even though I don't think it needs 10 amps um, but I got it off eBay from China. It was either that or a 2 amp one, which already um, cut out in overcurrent protection. So the uh, 10 amp one seems fine, even though it's a bit overkill. Although it is um, quite heavy and it's on the top of the body, which as I mentioned leans backwards and forwards, so it actually helps to balance it. Also have an infrared receiver, because the whole thing is basically remote controlled with a universal remote because the pickaxe chips can read Sony infrared commands directly so uh, basically that's what I use to control it so I've got my pickaxe programming editor here the code is literally as I said loads and loads of timers and fixed positions um, in long sequences that um, basically make the servos move and then the gyros recompensate for that movement so I've used as many variables I can and as many loops but essentially it means I sit here for ages tinkering with the numbers um, you know of leaning to one side to the other the time that it takes in milliseconds and even one or two milliseconds will upset the gate that's the way it walks and also the gyro sensitivities which we set here on a, a servo channel so even um, 2% will make a difference to the way it walks. So let's put this on the floor. It walks best on carpet due to the fact that it's got very smooth feet. All of this white plastic is HDPE which is what um, plastic chopping boards are made of. Although they're normally textured this is smooth so it does slip on smooth surfaces. I'm probably going to experiment by uh, uh, making it some shoes out of a variety of materials, rubbers and so on to see what works best. And I should probably also point out that um, every single piece of this was made by hand by me with hand tools so I don't have a 3D printer, I don't have any CNC facilities all of these bits of aluminium were cut out with a hacksaw and filed smooth all of these bits of plastic were cut out with um, essentially a knife on a cutting board and all of the bits of aluminium were bent in a vise with a hammer and all the holes were drilled with a drill press so let's just turn it on Turn on the low voltage electronic supply and then the main battery pack. You can see all the lights flashing there, which are the gyros, and once they've calibrated, 
then it goes to its default position with some occasionally pleasing flashing lights on the servo controllers so I'm just going to basically make this walk for a bit and then we'll have a look at it from some different angles Just wanted to show you more clearly the servo that I've got in the top here. That's got another gyro in fact to deal with the front and back movement. So you should be able to see that uh, this piece is moving backwards and forwards and that's to attempt to deaden any front to back wobble. So as I said before when that was walking just along there the um, pickaxe is telling the servo controllers to move the servos to set positions on set timers and the gyros are basically compensating for the movement so that it doesn't overbalance and therefore it's dynamically stable. The other thing we can do is basically turn the sensitivity right up on all the gyros um, and the way they're set is that they basically fight each other so they <clears throat> it always tries to balance back to the middle but if we make them too sensitive then it oscillates and I can do that just by pressing the number 2 on my remote and giving it a knock and then it will do that indefinitely it's actually quite stable if I give it an additional push in any direction it'll just happily oscillate away and um, compensate for me doing so So the next plan I think for actually making it walk is to leave it oscillating and then use some mechanism to measure the frequency of the oscillations or at least when they occur and as it's tilting one way move the legs appropriately so that it can walk along in very small steps. So the natural oscillation is actually much quicker than the gait I have programmed for the normal walking which I just showed you. So it'll have to take much smaller steps, although they're quite small anyway, but it should um, make it truly uh, dynamically stable using its natural oscillation rather than me forcing the positions and using the gyros to compensate, which is frankly not very pleasing. It's a bit of a bodge. So somehow we need to measure the backwards and forwards oscillations and at the right time move each leg in turn so that it hobbles along. Not quite sure how I'm going to do that. I don't think I can use a pickaxe for it because I think whatever I use to measure it, probably another gyro or something similar, the pickaxe isn't going to read that data quick enough and be able to activate the legs at the right time um, in order to walk along. So it's possible we might have to stick an Arduino on there or something else. But essentially at that point, all the pickaxe is doing is setting the sensitivity for the gyros so we can get rid of that, probably use an Arduino as well. The other thing I want to do of course is put its head and its arms on and I've got several spare channels left on my second servo controller so we should have no problem with programming those. So check out for future updates, the, as I say the, the uh, link in the description of this video goes to the blog for building this Android. You can also discuss this in my forums at xrobots.co.uk forum